Okay, welcome to part three of this series. Um, in this video, what we're going to be doing is coding the function to actually send our text message, which is the send SMS function that we have commented out here. So um, let's go ahead and do that, I guess. But before we do, I'm just going to uncomment it because we're obviously going to need to test this, and uncommenting that function is probably going to be something I'm going to forget to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to our backend file here and we'll create the function to actually send the message. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is just define the function. So it's going to be a function, obviously. Its name is going to be send SMS. Like I said previously, it's going to take three parameters. These are going to be two, the number that the message has to be two, who the message is going to be from, so Bob, whoever, and then the message, which is just going to be message. Oops, that should be like that. Okay. And then inside of here, what we need to do is process this data and send it to the API provided by the source SMS service. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is define the URL that we're going to be sending our data to. Um, so I'm going to define this as a new variable here called URL. And this is HTTP uh, colon blah blah blah. And all this, this you can get this from the website as well. So. Um, can't think of anything to say while doing this, so hopefully I'll just get it right. API slash API function dot PHP. Um, that looks right, I think. Um, yep. Okay, good. So there you go. That's the URL that we want to be sending our post data to. Um, and the data we need to send is, um, well, we're going to define it as an array and then we're going to process that array into you know post formatted data so we need to send we need to send sort of key and value pairs so the fact we need to send quite a lot of data actually but um, the three most important things are these two from and message variables so what I'm going to do is define a new array here called data and this is going to be equal to an array and I'm just going to bring that down there and we need to send who the message is from which is going to be set to the from variable just straight like that we need to send who the message is to, which is going to be set to the to variable. And we need to set who the actual message, which is just going to be set to the message variable. Again, with a missing one of those. Uh, we need to set the username, which is the username you use to register on the um, website, the source sms.com. And for me, I just set this to my name, so there we go. Then you need to set the P word, which is your API password, which I showed you in the first video. Um, but just for the sake of going back to it, um, it's just given here on your accounts page, API password, and then this number here. So I'm just going to copy that actually and go to our um, code and just paste it in. Okay. And then this next thing is the hash which I have no idea what that is. It doesn't seem to say what it is anywhere in the documentation. It does say don't change it and it gives you a value. So I'm just going to paste that, well I'm going to write that value in here. So rjk equals h4kl. No idea what that does. Um, it would be quite nice to know but the information is not provided. The next thing is the form country and this is the code the um, like short code, I think it's called, um, of the country that the form or the server is in. So for me, or where the you know where the message is being sent from. So I'm going to set this for me because I'm in the UK to 44, which is the short code for the UK. I don't think they're actually called short codes now. I've changed my mind. But anyway, the next thing we need to define is the source info, which again I'm not entirely sure what that does. I think it's related to what is returned by the API but we're going to be ignoring that return value so I'm just going to set this to zero which I think means don't mean think it means ignore it um, so that's that that's, that's all of the data actually now defined so I'm just going to go ahead and neaten this up a little bit by tabbing these across um, and this as it is is um, just a raw array a, uh, array of sort of PHP data the data object if you like um, so what we need to do is process this and turn it into something that we can be used in HTTP requests so effectively what we need to do is create a string like you see in the URL when there is get data. 
So if we just go to our browser, um, you may have seen before something like this in the URL thing equals seven and other equals thing or something like that. And we need to create a string like this portion to um, actually send as post data. Um, luckily for us, PHP introduced a function to do that uh, quite easily, so we'll just use that function here. So what we can do is actually replace our simple array definition with the use of this function. So what we need to do is here, well, I'll demonst to demonstrate, what we need to do is use the HTTP uh, build query function on our array. What we can actually do is use it up here, so we can do HTTP build query and then we can just pass in our actual array which is all of this bit and then we just need to close the function there. So now for the sake of uh, demonstration I'll just do a simple echo data like so and go back to our uh, contact form and just click send again and we get a parse error. Uh, oh, okay, I'll have to fix that without showing you. Okay, so what happened there is I'd missed a semicolon from the end of where I defined the my number variable, but don't worry about that. Anyway, let's reload this again, hit resend, and you can see that you get this output here. And this is the result of the HTTP build query. So if I just reload this page, oh, no, not reload the page, if I just read the page source to see the exact output, you can see that we have this bit here now, which we didn't before. Um, so this is again the result of the query and this is URL encoded so you can see that the space has, uh, in the really long has been replaced with a plus and this is important because we need to send URL encoded data um, as the, in the HTTP, HTTP request otherwise it won't work and also the API um, is expecting URL encoded data so if you don't URL, don't URL encode it it will sort of mess up some special characters so yeah that's that Anyway, now that we have this string, we can use it to build up our HTTP request. So let's go back to our code and do that. So let's remove this output or this echo here. And we're going to, what we're going to do is define a new variable called request. And this is going to contain all of our headers that we're going to send as part of the HTTP request. Now, what we're doing here is manually sending post data. Now, you can use something like uh, curl or um, any other HTTP post library to do this. Um, the reason we're doing it manually is for maximum compatibility and also it's a bit more fun uh, and you get to understand the actual sort of technicalness kind of behind it. Okay, so let's define uh, this as an array because it is going to be an array, it should be an array. So request with square brackets equals the first line of the HTTP request has to be post like so and then the name of the um, query portion of the URL which is this bit here so to get this bit here what we're going to do is replace our simple URL definition here with the result of parse URL on this URL and what that will do is break up the URL into its various parts so one of the parts is this query string, so everything here. And we need a few of the bits of information from it as well, so that's why we're doing it like that. Um, and also, if they ever change their URL for their thing, you would have to just change this one value here without having to change um, various bits throughout the function. So we're sending post data to the um, path, which is that bit I just highlighted, and this is contained now in the URL path key variable thing. And after that, we need to specify the HTTP version, which is 1.1, not 2, not 2 again. Okay, so that's that done. The next line is going to be the host header, which is another required one. So request, so we're going to add something onto this array again. And this is just going to be the, oops, the host um, header. And this is going to be equal to the value again from the URL variable and it's going to be the host key. Okay, and that's that done, fairly straightforward. The next thing we need is the content type which has to be set to the one that means form so we'll just type out whatever that was 
requests again and we'll add a string which is going to be the content type header and this needs to be set to application slash x www form url encoded without that k there okay and that just means form data sent via post which we know already and that it's url encoded which is because this http build query function will url encode each of these values okay so the next line is we need to um, specify the content length which is the amount of data we're sending um, and that is used by the server on the other end the actual API server um, to determine how much data needs to be read and processed so we're just going to set the content length header so content length and this is just needs to be equal to the string length of the data variable that we defined up there and that will just be effectively the number of bytes or the number of characters but it's the same okay and finally we just need to specify that the connection needs to be closed instead of being kept open which is the default usually depends on the server but we don't want it to be kept open because we want to send it and then close it and then move on so we just, we just specify here connection close okay and that's the sort of headers defined and then we need to add an empty element as a line separator between our headers and our actual data so I'm going to add an empty element here without that P okay and then we need to add our actual data so we're going to add again request and then instead of adding something as a string we're just going to add our data variable we defined you know up above and you could actually use the HTTP build query function here However, then you wouldn't be able to use the string length, so that's why we define it as a variable. This single definition looks a little bit odd, but it's kind of necessary. And finally, we just need to add another blank line to indicate the end of our data. So I'm just going to copy this down to there. Okay, so that's our headers defined. And what I'm going to do now is just do echo uh, implode, because what we need to do is put a line break between each of these sort of headers and output them. So instead of just a standard line break we need actually we need a carriage return and a line break which is just the standard for how you separate HTTP headers and we're imploding the request. So just by outputting that we'll see if our headers kind of look right before we go ahead and test it out and waste all of our credits. So let's go back to our form and hit reload, resend and you can see that we have this um, data output here if I just view the page source, we'll be able to see this in sort of plain text format. So here it is. So what we have is post and then that path or query string that I highlighted. We have the host uh, header set as the server address, the content type, the length to 123, which is odd, um, and the connection is being told to be closed. And then this down here is the result of our HTTP build query. Um, which is just um, you know the post data that we need to send. It's that array but encoded. Okay, so that's that done. The next thing we need to do then is open up our connection to the server and actually send the data. Now this is a really simple thing to do. So let's go ahead and go back to our code. And instead of outputting this directly, what I'm going to do is well, I'm going to ignore it for a moment. What I'm going to do first is open a connection to the server using the fsoc open function. This takes two parameters, the first being the um, server, the host that you want to actually open a connection to, and this is again contained in the URL host variable. The second parameter is the port, which is 80, because it's HTTP, that's always 80. Okay, next thing we need to do is write our request, which is what I just output to the this open connection, but obviously to do that we need to store the result of this connection in a variable. So I'm going to create a new variable here called socket and put it equal to the result of that function. Then we can write to this function, sorry, we can write to this socket using the fwrite function and we're writing to the socket. And what we want to write is that implode line. So what I'm going to do is just copy this down like so 
and then I'm going to delete the outputting of it because we don't need it anymore. So once we've written our data, that will actually have sent the message and we should receive the text then. Um, and then we just need to close the connection because we don't want to keep it open anymore. It's not necessary to close it. However, because of the connection close line, I believe the server will actually close the connection before this, but um, it's just sort of good practice to always close connections that you open. Um, so yeah, that's why we're doing that. Okay, so we should be ready now to test this out. Um, because this function has just been completed, what I'm going to do is go ahead and comment out this line here. I'll not comment it out, comment what this function does, and we'll just say it sends a SMS using the source SMS API. And that should be capitalized. Okay, so that's that done. Um, so what we've created here is something that's similar to the mail function, but for text messages. So as a final test, what we'll do is go back to our um, page, just hit reload, and we'll type in a name that's different. So let's say uh, Mike, why not? And um, did you get my email? <laughs> why not? So we'll click send, and you should hear some horrible interference anytime soon. And then again, I'll stick in a screenshot of my phone to show you what it looks like, and to sort of prove it actually works. Okay, so um, that is pretty much that. Um, so again, thank you for watching, and there are promo codes for free credits on that Source SMS website, and a link to get 25% off when you actually buy credits. So feel free to check those out, those uh, them out. It's very kind of them to offer that discount for you guys. Um, it's apparently exclusive to my subscribers only. Um, I'm not sure how they're going to check that. I guess they're not, but um, yeah subscribe. <laughs> anyway, that's enough from me, uh, so thank you for watching and come back for future videos where we will um, do more things.